Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, folks. Welcome to That Vid Blaster Guy. I'm Tom Sinclair, That Vid Blaster Guy, and delighted to bring you another episode of That Vid Blaster Guy. <laughs> Sorry about that. The purpose of the show is to prove the point that one man with one PC can do one awesome broadcast. And we got the one man and we got the one PC and we're working on the one awesome broadcast, but we're getting better and better. And thanks to our friends out there, this great, cool background uh, is a gift from Dr. Charles Campbell. Appreciate that. And, and, and advice on the, the graphic down here, I think from Jim Moline. And it's always nice to have friends that, that'll help you out. The show is basically divided into three parts. We, do, we try to cover each one of these bases on a show. We, we do shows about, uh, about internet TV talk shows like this one, explaining the different piece parts, how to put it together, how to make it work. Uh, we talk about sports broadcasting. That's a great way to use VidBlaster to go out in the field, take cameras with you, set it up in a press box somewhere, and uh, do multi-camera shoot with instant replay and, and scoreboards and lower thirds and all that stuff. And that's a lot of fun. And then we support and love church broadcasting, where you can set up one or more, uh, excuse me, one or more cameras in the same building. And, uh, and use, sometimes it, it can be without camera people, where you're just using a static shot and moving from shot to shot from a, from a podium or a lectern to a wide shot of the choir, to a full width shot of the sanctuary, those kinds of things. So between internet broadcasting, TV shows like this one, sports broadcasting, and church broadcasting, that's kind of the themes that we work on on VidBlaster. Today's show is really going to kind of be a blend of all of those because we're going to talk about things that are common to all of those shows. Um, one of the things that's, that's common to any show are... Let's see if I've got one right here. Connectors, connectors. So we wanted to talk, do a little demo here at the very beginning or, or a little promo. And let me get my camera queued up on it here. Uh, hold on just a second, I've got so many cameras set up, it's hard to say which one it is. Maybe it's camera number four. There it is, camera number four. All sorts of connectors you need to have in your bag just to be on the safe side because you never know when you're going to need this little guy right here to join two RCA connectors together. Maybe it's a component, excuse me, composite video. Maybe it's um, some audio cables, but something like that is always handy. Maybe it's you got a mail on this end, a mail on that end, and you got to have a way to connect them together. That's a good one to have in your bag and that one can be had on the internet. All of these I think I bought off the internet or from my local Radio Shack. Another one that's really handy to have is this little guy right here. It's a RCA on one end, and so it'll plug into the RCA point on your mixer or um, in um, uh, your ballon or things like that. And then on the other side, it's 3.5 millimeter, so it would handle an, an audio signal. Um, and I use these a lot of times uh, when I'm setting up a, um, a separate, uh, what do you call it, uh, intercom system out at a ballpark so my camera people can have access to hear what, uh, what their directions are. I'll plug this part into the ballon and this part will plug an earpiece into so that they can hear me. So that's pretty nifty. Let's see. Every now and then, you may be in a situation where you need to use coax cable. Let me just put that back down on the white part. I think you can see it better there. Um, and that particular one is RCA on the one end, so it would plug into a ballon or something like that. And then on the other end, it's threaded to plug into the female part of a coax cable. And I've actually run coax cable 500 feet in a football field from the press box to one end zone and used a connector like this on one end and a connector like this on the other end. So let's roll that guy out of the way. And then of course this one to connect two pieces 
of coax cable together. And then let's see, this one's pretty simple. This one is just uh, 3.5 millimeter on either end for connecting that sound cable together. And this one is great because frequently on your mixing board, you'll have the, uh, the quarter inch. This is, this is actually a stereo. You can tell by the two black dots. Um, and on the other end, it's 3.5. So it's quarter inch for your mixer side and then 3.5 millimeter or what would be called uh, eighth inch. Um, and I think, again, available on the internet. And if you get the ones from China, I've had a few of those and some of them worked and some of them didn't. And obviously it wasn't really worth sending it back to China for $5. But uh, I try to get the ones in the States when I can. Okay. And we'll get that one out of the way. This is another quarter inch, but it's got an RCA jack on the other side. And there are times uh, when you might need to, say, hook up. Um, you might have a hum in your mixer and you're putting in a ground loop uh, isolator of some kind and you might need to change over to RCA in order to do that. And so it's nice to have something like that in your kit bag. All right, we'll push those aside. Uh, this is basically, you know, it's the good old splitter. RCA on one side, RCA on the other. Uh, it's okay for audio, but it tends to degrade the video a little bit. And we'll push those guys out of the way. Here's another splitter that has got uh, eighth inch or 3.5 on the one end and then dual RCAs on the other end. I mean, they are more of these things than you can stick, shake a stick at. This is actually a 2.5 millimeter and this would be what would plug into, say, a cell phone um, and has on the other side of it a 3.5 millimeter. So you could plug in, aha, a different kind of thing. I've also included uh, up here just to look at. This is a, let me push these guys out of the way so we've got plenty of room to look now. This is a breakout cable from, we'll pull those out of the way for the moment, from an Intensity Pro, a Blackmagic Intensity Pro uh, card. And as you can see, it's got a ton of connectors on it. The card itself has got HDMI in and out. But in this case, uh, these are, let's see, component in and out would be the uh, blue, green, red. And then the other blue, green, red would be, one would be component in, one would be component out. And then red and white would be audio in and red and white audio out. And the black one, I think, is composite video. Um, I'd have to check to know for sure. But that's the Intensity Pro card. And then the good old easy cap plugs into the port and gives you the ability to have audio and video with our two audios right there our video which is an RCA and then this one happens to have S video on it too um, most of what everything we're doing here on the, that vid blaster guy show is just um, excuse me standard definition we don't tend to do a whole lot, well, don't tend to do a whole lot, don't tend to do any uh, high definition at this point. Everything that we're doing on the show is simply standard definition. I've selected standard definition because, number one, it's where I came from. It's, it's easy to use and it's readily available and the, the show that you're seeing right now is in standard definition. Um, and so, as a result, that's what I know the best. Um, somebody was asking me the other day, you know, isn't your room just filled with equipment? Yes, it's filled with equipment. Periodically, I misplace some of it. But most everything has to do with standard definition. Um, I like standard definition because everybody can receive standard definition. High definition, if I spend all the time and money to set up a high def feed and then people at home can't watch it because their internet connection doesn't support it, uh, I've wasted my time and energy. Um, you ever get the feeling like you're being watched? Anyway, 
the point of the matter is standard definition is somewhat, I would say, universal. Um, we're going to move into high definition as we get an opportunity. Um, and obviously, yeah, the guys in the chat are like, what, what was that? Um, I couldn't resist another opportunity to do a little, uh, a, a little uh, uh, two of me there. I worked on that this morning and just, just had a ball figuring it out. And basically, it's just it's a combination of a, a pre-recorded video. And uh, we'll pop that up there. That's the pre-recorded video of, of me. And that's somebody in the chat room earlier says, ah, that's why the chair was there. Yeah, I should, I sh should have taken the chair out of the picture before. And so I'm just up against the green screen. The shadows were not too noticeable, thanks to Charles's moving background. Um, and then, uh, then I popped it into a chroma key, and so it looked like that. So now I've got uh, my, my main camera is uh, chroma key source number one, and the, the play, <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> and the player that's playing this, this, this creeper in the background is uh, is the source number two for that video effect module? You know, it's, everybody's in, has got a comment to make, don't they? Um, and then I took this, which is now a video effect, and I put it into a, another video effect module that's a chroma key. And so the combined image of me and the creeper back there um, was the first module. You see a little bit of a little bit of shadow popped up right there. Um, and then the, the second source in the video effect module is, the, is Charles's background. And then to finish it all off, I used another video effect module uh, on what they call source overlay. And so I took my combined picture as the uh, source one and then the, the uh, video overlay module that has this graphic in it as source number two. Um, Oh, goodness. So, that's how you can, uh, you can clone yourself, as it were. Um, yeah. And, you know, what's best, you, you, we can just leave him on a loop and he can be doing this, this all day. Blah, blah, blah. That's right. <laughs> okay. We will send the creeper away, never to be seen again. How about that? And, uh, and I'm going to change the video effect back to video effect number one. And that, as you notice, that took the shadow away. And now we have just our basic video effect, which is the, uh, the green screen camera um, that's on me. And let's see, let's find that one so we can show you there. Uh, that's this one. And then we put a... Uh, player in the background with chroma key, and then we dropped the lower third on top of it. So that was some fun with with chroma key and lower thirds and recordings, and it's and it's really easy to do. So that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun, and we are just zipping through <laughs> our agenda. Um, yeah, uh, message from the chat room comment about the background. It, it really, this is a nice background. My good friend, Dr. Charles Campbell, sent it to me. And he sent it to me as a MOV file, a QuickTime file, and um, which was about uh, 100 megabytes or, you know, pretty, pretty large file, I thought. And as I played it, you see the images in the background changing pretty regularly. I mean, there's always something moving or changing. But excuse me, in that, in that MOV file, it didn't seem to move very well. And at the very end of it, pow, was a white, white flash, one white frame at the very end. And I recall that being something to do with the VidBlaster fr uh, player device. And so I, um, I converted it to an AVI file um, with a program called Oxalon that's a free download and does a, does a pretty good job. And when I did that, not only did it, it make the file smaller, 
and it played more smoothly and it took the white frame off. Now, the way it really appears, let's see if I can put that up by itself and we're gonna put it back to automatic. That's, that's the way it really appears, um, but I've gone into the player and select the aspect ratio and used an aspect ratio of 1.78. Uh, 1.78 is almost perfect. You notice there's just the slightest black bar. See how my finger kind of covers up the black bar here on the, oops, on this side, my right, your left. Um, that's because um, I'm using a resolution of 864 by 480, and the, the 1.78 aspect resolution is actually uh, 854 by, by 180, so there's an extra five pixels. Uh, missing on, on either end. Uh, while we're talking about aspect ratios, I've noticed a lot of folks um, in their YouTube videos or their, their live online videos uh, are suffering from aspect ratioitis. They, they just haven't gotten it figured out for whatever reason. Sometimes they're squished. Let me see if I can do that here. Uh, I'm going to go into my camera. I'm going to change the aspect ratio. And yeah, sometimes they're, they're squished like this where they're taking a, a wide 16.9 uh, aspect ratio and they're squishing it into a 4.3, which gives you the, the letter boxes on the side. And let's see, let's go back to, that would be normal. Um, let's see if I can take a different cam. We'll take this cam and see how this cam it will do. Aspect ratio squished. Aspect ratio, that was 1.33. We've got a 1.78, so that one's okay. And aspect ratio auto. Ooh, you notice the difference between auto and 1.78? We've got those last little, last little five pixels on each end. Um, I wish there was a way to show, oh, I bet I can do it here. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to our player and we're going to show you the different aspect ratios. 1.33, that's standard for this one. That's a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. But if I go to a 1.85, I've actually squished it down. And if they were really, if you could see the people in them, they would be really fat faced right now. And then 1.78 is what I was using for my background. And then we'll go to auto. Yeah, auto is 4.3. So we'll go back to 1.78. And that is a real quick and dirty on aspect ratios. One of the things to remember about aspect ratio and it, it applies to resolution and frame rate too, is that you've got a link from the original image to the viewer. Um, you've got a series of links, and if those links get, get crumpled up somehow, you're in trouble. It is always best, if you can, to keep the same resolution from the camera to the, the to vid blaster or your cap, or, or in this case, let me just, let me do it the way uh, let's pull back over to, to this shot that we used just a second ago. Um, this shot right here, the capture card. This is a Canon Vixia uh, camera. It's set up through an Osprey, Osprey capture card. It's running um, on composite, so it's, it's standard definition. Not a bad picture for standard definition. It is, uh, it's set on the wide frame at, uh, at standard definition um, resolution. It's coming into a, an Osprey 450 capture card at 864 by 480, 25 frames a second. And that would be the widescreen format. VidBlaster is taking it at 864 by 480, 25 frames a second. It's processing through VidBlaster to Flash Media Live Encoder and let's see, let me get a, if I can get a flash window up here for you and see if you can see any of that. Uh, yeah, let me bump that up just a tad there. 
Whoops, that what didn't do. Let me redo my screen capture for you. Capture 16.9. We'll try to get as much of the screen as we can here. And I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me capture it one more time. Sorry about that. I'm being a little clumsy with the capture. But I really only want to show you this section right in here. There we go. Um, I've used, um, we'll come back to device in just a second, but you can see the 864 by 480 is the input size. That is where Flash is receiving the video at that resolution. And I've asked it to maintain the aspect ratio. And then I'm outputting 864 by 480 to decast at 800K. I've also got that second stream going out at 200 at 320 by 178, which is really teeny, I know, but that's so folks can watch me on their phones and not be killed on their bandwidth. Um, while we're here, let's go back up to this part where it says device vid blaster. There were actually a couple of choices for me right there. I could have chosen um, vid blaster VVD, and you remember the discussion that we've had a couple of weeks ago about using uh, the streamer, which produces the vid blaster stream, and the video out module, which produces the VidBlaster VVD stream, and how we wanted to send one to Skype and one to Flash Media Live Encoder, because when we sent the same one, uh, in this case the VidBlaster VVD, to both Skype and Flash Media Live Encoder, uh, whenever Skype did something, it made Flash kind of hiccup and change the, the aspect ratio, which just wasn't very cool at all. And so for one week, we had the VVD going to Flash Media Live Encoder, and then the streamers, VidBlaster stream, going to um, Skype. But what we found out was that Skype only had four or five frames a second if we did it like that. So we switched them up and sent Flash Media Live Encoder the streamer stream entitled VidBlaster, and then we sent Skype the stream entitled Flash, excuse me, entitled VidBlaster VVD. So that's why we've got VidBlaster here. The other option that we have, and see, now I guess it's not going to drop down because it's live right now, is the format. In Flash Media Live Encoder, there are two formats you can choose from. VP6 is what's selected here, and H.264. Now, when I first started out in, in internet broadcasting, I did a lot of testing with this because I was streaming with a dual core uh, Dell uh, desktop on a DSL line that had a max connection of about 350 kbps. So I had an underpowered machine on a slow internet connection. Uh, not a good combination. And so what I had to try to do was to find the balance between an encoder that would give me a really good picture but wouldn't use up a whole lot of CPU usage, I mean, use up a whole lot of CPU, or an encoder that um, gave me a really good picture but didn't use a whole lot of bandwidth to do it. And so what I found was that H.264 really does a better job of encoding if you are restricted on bandwidth but have extra CPU to use. Um, and VP6 is kind of the opposite. If you've got CPU to spare, um, and it does a much better job. So that's why we're using VP6 now, but we used to use the H.264 uh, almost exclusively when we did the sports broadcasting. Um, if I were doing sports right now, I would not be broadcasting at 25 frames a second. That for sports, that's a little jerky. Uh, 30 frames a second works much better. But again, remember, remember the chain. You've got to have your camera set for 30 frames a second. You've got to have your capture card set for 30 frames a second. Vid Blaster's got to be set for 30 frames a second. Flash Media Live Encoder's got to be set for 30 frames a second. I don't think your CDN cares about frame rate. Um, but backing up to resolution, that's another link in the chain. Um, when you tell your CDN what, what resolution you're using, and if the, if the CDN gives you embed codes, um, 
to, to put in your website, uh, you want to make sure your embed codes are for 16.9 video if that's what you're streaming uh, and not 4.3. I noticed on somebody's show on Sunday night that they had beautiful quality video, uh, but it was squished because the embed codes that they got from their CDN were not the embed codes that they wanted to use. They had their aspect ratio off. So pay, pay a lot of attention to those fine points. And again, you want the chain to be uh, consistent from end to end. Um, over here on the right side, you can see the audio in, and it's, it's taken the audio from my Behringer mixer. Uh, in this case, it's Behringer mixer number six, because I'm not sure why it starts with six, but I've also got a Behringer number three, which is my Behringer uh, UCA202 USB sound card. Um, and we're doing mono because we don't get any bang for stereo. And our sample rate is only 22,000 because the human ear can't really tell a whole lot of difference in the human voice um, by going any higher than that. So there's no benefit to you, the listener, for me to push that up because uh, it just uses bandwidth and there's no appreciable difference. Uh, that tip is courtesy of Mike Phillips, who I appreciate for all his help. So going back to, to that screen grab for a second, you can see that I've got uh, 840 is the video and audio for my main feed, and then 240 for my secondary feed, giving me a total bandwidth that's required of just over... A meg. Now fortunately I've got a 5 meg 5 meg upload um, and I just tested it this morning it was like five and a half and 50 down of course down who cares about down it's 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 up that we want so I think I've got enough overhead when I decide to go to high definition video and to to be able to do that as well uh, let's see, let's take a, a break in the action for just a second, and we want to uh, talk about our contest, because last this week is the last opportunity you have to join the contest. So uh, let's bring back uh, Tom and Tom and let them tell you about the contest. Hi, I'm Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy. Me too! We're here to announce the contest. What contest? The Vid Blaster Giveaway Contest, of course. Oh, that contest. Yes, that contest. At the end of February, well, really our first show in March, we'll be giving away the home edition of Vid Blaster absolutely free. Or $195 credit towards an upgrade. Right. To enter, you'll need to produce a video showing a really creative way to use VidBlaster. Or a really cool show or broadcast idea using VidBlaster, of course. Send us a link to your recorded video, and we'll have our judges take a look. We'll announce the winners on our March 5th show. So don't waste time. Get your entry in today. Send a link to your entry to Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com. Good luck. That's right. Good luck. Now back to the show. The show as it was. Those guys, what are we going to do with those guys? I mean to tell you. Sometimes, some people should not be left alone in a room with this equipment. You know, there's just no telling what they're, what they're going to do, what they're going to come up with. Oh, that was just really fun. Uh, for those of you that might have joined, uh, have joined us late, um, let me see if we can... We can do it again. We had a, uh, had a, we had a, let me set it up right. We had a break in in the studio and we've noticed that some, some equipment has been missing. Uh, we're not quite sure who the culprit is, but uh, believe me, we're going to get to the bottom of it because nobody takes equipment out of my studio without me knowing about it. Now, I have had a little problem with sleepwalking. Um, so you just never know uh, what the story may be. So you, you, you kind of get the idea. Um, this was just a 
you know, I wish I'd done this four weeks ago as a good example of, of how somebody can have fun with Vid Blaster for the contest. But uh, that was that was me earlier today trying to figure out ways to keep you entertained and uh, and do a little uh, maybe a little editorial on myself as it were. Goodness, goodness. You know, some people have got way too much time on their hands. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Blah, blah, blah to you, too. <laughs> okay. If you, um, if you missed the first part of the show, you can go back into YouTube, and, and I talk about how I did that. It was really a lot of fun. Really a lot of fun. Um, the contest. We've got, uh, we've got, I would say, several entries into the contest. Not as many as I would have expected, seeing as how we're giving away a free home edition of Vid Blaster, no strings attached, or credit, that much credit, $195 U.S. credit towards the purchase of an upgrade to, from whatever version you are to whatever version you want to go to, or excuse me, edition. Um, so the, uh, the clock is ticking. You've got two days left. All you have to do is send a link to Tom at thatvidblasterguy.com, and uh, the link can be to wherever your video is stored, and it can be something that you've, a show that you've broadcast. It can be something you've made up just for, for the Vid Blaster contest. It can be something cute like what I've done to, to demonstrate your proficiency at, in, in Vid Blaster, or it can be uh, an, an idea for a new show. Um, I'm really hoping it's, it's folks are going to submit some ideas for new shows because I need some ideas. <laughs> That's my ultimate behind-the-scenes motivation for for this show is so I can steal it. No, 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 not not really. Um, but I also want to hear um, some ideas that folks might have for some other giveaways in the future because I think that can be a lot of fun and, and spur a lot of creativity. Um, I, what I plan to do, um, assuming that it's okay with all the folks that, that entered the contest, is make all of the, the entries available, probably play them all during the show next week, because that's when we're, we will announce the winner, um, and, and talk a little bit about them, and then talk about our winner and, and why we chose that one. Um, so it's a great opportunity for you to promote your own show, if you'd like to, and we've got uh, one or two that are doing that, and then some others that uh, are taking the more more creative end, end of it. Um, so, heck, if you just want to promote your own show, send us a clip of a video uh, that you've made using VidBlaster. It has to be using VidBlaster. And, uh, and we'll get you on there. So, let's see. Um, where are we going next in our show? Because we have covered just about all of... Oh, I know what we wanted to do next. Um... Let's see. Let's go here for a second. And we'll do that and that. Coming up tonight, uh, we've got Tech Talk tonight. Um, one of our viewers, Braden, does a, a great job. Um, and his he generally comes on on Wednesday nights tonight. He's coming on on Tuesday night, 8 o'clock uh, Central Time. And then I actually had, a, and, and it's really cute. Uh, Braden has got the most incredible studio. You ought to see his, he, he needs to do a studio tour. Uh, not just a map of his studio, because that includes like a thousand wires, um, but a, uh, a, an actual studio tour. I also got an email today from the folks at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium in Clearwater, Florida, and they have, they use VidBlaster for their dolphin cam. They have a series of dolphin cams at, uh, at seawinner.com. Winner's the name of one of their dolphins. Apparently, Winner was a, a star in a, in a recent dolphin movie. Uh, didn't know they had movies just for dolphins, but uh, Winner was a star on that. And so uh, you can see Winner there. And then Eric has got uh, a, a show called Wait, I Know This um, that is is really a lot of fun. Basically, he interviews uh, stars, movie TV stars from the 50s and 60s, and uh, that's a great era when TV was just cutting his teeth. So 
those are upcoming VidBlaster events and shows. And uh, I, I had forgotten all about, let's see, my, my good friend Kent's show, uh, Fiat Ministry. So let me see if I can do an overlay on that one real quick. And that's one of the things I love about VidBlaster is that it's got the, uh, what we would call uh, live text built right into it. So you can basically on a, on a whim, um, boy, if I could spell, I would be dangerous. Um, on a whim or at the last minute, uh, throw up a graphic. And so we're gonna throw up Fiat Ministries. We're gonna put some line feeds in behind it so you can see it better. Uh, oh, and that's not .com, it's .org, I'm sorry. Kent, there we go, fiatministry.org. And I was actually on that show uh, a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Kent, appreciate that. Um, and uh, Kent is a, is a tech guy and a faith guy and invites folks to come in and talk about their faith, and sometimes they end up talking about tech too. Um, so that, that's good stuff. So we're glad to have folks... Uh, and if you've got a show coming up, we'd love to know about it. We're going to be putting a show page on our website. And this is, again, folks that are using VidBlaster. Um, we, we like all our Wirecast friends too, but here we're going to be promoting VidBlaster. So if you've got a VidBlaster show, we would love to have you uh, send us links to your regular shows or to your special shows so that we can announce them here on the air on that VidBlaster guy and also put them on the website. And who knows, you know, if you've got a really interesting show, you might end up being a guest on that VidBlaster guy at some point. Um, so let's see. Let's uh, take a little, I don't know if, if, if any of you guys are really uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh fans, but Rush always would say uh, that he's going to take a, what is it, a, a, a revenue break or something like that. So we're going to take a quick revenue break. And uh, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy. One of the reasons why I started the show, that VidBlaster guy, is so that I could show off the power and the ease of use of my favorite software, VidBlaster. Every week we do a live show that talks all about VidBlaster and we have guests on that show how they're using VidBlaster and how they couldn't do what they're doing without VidBlaster. Anyway, you know the routine. The other reason why I started the show is because I'm a VidBlaster reseller. I want people when they buy VidBlaster to buy it from me. That way you get personal support from me, Tom Sinclair, that VidBlaster guy. You get my cell phone number. You get my email address. If you're in a jam and you need an answer, you've got somebody to call. Call me, Tom Sinclair. You can get VidBlaster from my website, thatvidblasterguy.com. There's a store there. Just click on the link and get VidBlaster, get a license to VidBlaster. If you need to upgrade, let's say you've got the Home Edition, you want to upgrade to the Pro Edition, you get 100% credit for the Home Edition that you already own towards your purchase of the Pro Edition, but it does have to be handled manually. So shoot me an email, tom at that vidblasterguy.com, and, uh, and we'll get that in the works for you. If you need great support for great software, Call me, Tom Sinclair, that bit blaster guy. And also, watch us uh, on Tuesdays on the That Bit Blaster Guy show. Or heck, watch us live today. Why not? Why not? So we are, uh, we are hoping that we can uh, have a, a special guest. Uh, Dr. Charles Campbell is going to come in and... Uh, and visit with us, we hope, in the chat room. But in the meantime, I, I did want to show you a picture that uh, one of our friends in chat has uh, sent me based on today's show. Um, seems to think that uh, I need to alter my diet, as it were. Um, <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with a screen capture. Thank you, Braden. Oh my goodness, you just never know what's going to happen out there. It's, it's a, it, it does go to show you, though, um, how important... Uh-oh, did I lose my chat? No, there we go. 
uh, how important having accurate information is because you can make things uh, show just about anything else that you want to. Um, oh, we're getting some folks reporting that the stream is is down. So let's stop it here and we'll, uh, we'll restart it for them. And for those of you that are watching on, uh, on YouTube, it's just a little hiccup in the works. But we want to make sure our friends that are watching us live uh, can see us. There we go. All right. Very good. Somehow we, we lost our feed there at some point. Oh, did that lose it again? How about that? Let me check with the folks. Okay, now. Okay, very good. You can hear me, but you can't see me. Is that it? All right. You can see and hear. Okay, that's good. That would be Dr. Campbell. Okay, all is well. All right, Dr. Campbell, we are waiting for your Skype call. Um, so call on in, and we'll set up a screen cap and get you on the air. Dr. Charles Campbell from Columbia, South Carolina, has just, uh, or ha hasn't yet, but is in the process of opening a, a studio, a broadcast studio in Columbia, where he can use VidBlaster to help folks produce their own internet TV shows. And so I've been working with him over the last several weeks to get all the piece parts figured out. And he is also the one that's provided this great background here. And oops, let's see what we got here. Did we lose our chat again? Skype shows that I am not online. How about that? That's no good. Let me see if we can't fix that. Um, how about that? See if that does it. Sorry about that, Charles. You know, that's like inviting somebody over to your house and then locking all the doors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, while we're waiting for Charles to, cat, uh, to connect, uh, hat tip to Martin and Braden and Jim and John and Kent and Richard and Dave and Nick and Ken and Tommy and um, golly, don't know who Elk and PR is, um, but glad to have all you guys tuned in and watching in. Looks like mostly a U.S. crowd today. Uh, sometimes we'll have an, actually an, an international crowd with folks from all over. So, there's Dr. Charles Campbell, and let's see if we can't give him a little call here, and we'll set up a screen cap while we do that, and see what we can get. So, we'll try, keep trying Dr. Campbell. and see what we can get. You know, I'd set aside this morning to do show prep, and, uh, well, we'll give, give him a second to get things working that worked out on his end. I set up this morning to do show prep, prep, and I was all excited. I had this backdrop I was going to do with the creeper and, and show you connectors, and I was going to put together a, a tutorial on how to use Flash Media Live Encoder. And here's Charles calling in. Dr. Campbell, is that you? In living color. Hot dog. Well, it's almost living color because... Uh, turn, turn off the sound. I'm getting so many echoes here. <laughs> you need to turn off the show. That's, yep. That will be your best bet. I'm getting an echo. Okay. Have you turned off the show? Show's off. Show's off and you're still getting an echo. Nope. All better now. All better indeed. All right. 
All right, Dr. Charles Campbell. Dr. Campbell is a an author, among other things, having written articles for all sorts of uh, magazines, news magazines, social magazines uh, over the years, some of which I've had the pleasure of, of reading. One of my favorites, Charles, is the one that you wrote about using uh, business cards. And uh, Oh, I recycle that about every three or four or five years because it's valid whenever you get it. Well, and it's, and it's just, you know, good marketing is good marketing, um, no matter what. Yeah, for some reason, I'm really fuzzy. Yes, you are. You are fuzzy. Oh, well. Part, part of I it just, has to I do with... <laughs> I just noticed that my picture looks like the face on the uh, Shroud of Turin, except <laughs> for the headphones. <laughs> Well, I was kind of thinking the same thing, too. It's, it's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, um, yeah I see a reflection right. of my lenses, too. They don't have the uh, uh, coating on it. No, no. I love the way you do in the background. It's really, really great. That, that turned out really nicely. Thank you. That, that's, that's really cool. I like that. I and, got five of them for about around 10 bucks plus shipping. That's amazing. That's well, there's a sale. They were like 500 bucks before. So tell us how you're coming on your studio. Well, I had two gentlemen help me unload a 8 by 16 foot pod full of gear, desks, file cabinets and stuff. And that 1,200 foot studio all of a sudden became very small. <laughs> Loaded up. It's going to take a while. We've got to drop wires and get the the right kind of high speed internet going critical yes Crit extremely critical yes that's good now now tell the folks that are watching cuz they're not going to be going into competition with you in Colombia I don't think T tell them what what your idea is why why are you establishing this studio time warner has no public access television period i've create talk shows on radio and now on internet television. I used to be a news anchor 40 years ago when I was young, thin, and good-looking. Why am I off-center here? What do I got to do to move over? There we go. Throws me off. I'm sitting up in my bedroom, so it's uh, thunderstorms and etc. outside. But nonetheless, I'm looking for people who want to have their own TV studio. Now I'm going to be running 24-7. I'm tied in with radio station WOIC, which is a 1,000-watt uh, AM station. I've been on the air about 20 years. My doctorate's in media and marketing, and I was a foreign correspondent. In fact, I met my wife in Germany during the Oktoberfest. I don't drink, not because of any, anything other than the fact that I don't like the taste of it. And the journalists they sent from my department the year before got drunk with a bunch of Australians, hijacked a tram, and drove all over Munich for about four hours until they figured out how to stop them. <laughs> but anyway, give me something to do with my spare time. So we've gone from, uh, from Columbia to Munich in, in just four sentences. That's amazing. Well, live TV, man. <laughs> so, folks, that that now, why would somebody want to get on TV? What What are you thinking? To promote themselves, to market yourself. Television people, if you're on TV or radio, that puts you a step ahead of anybody else in your competition. Now, being on terrestrial radio, I found I had 14 shows on the air up until uh, about four years ago. And then all of a sudden, advertisers stop spending money. I don't know what political thing. Who knows? But it makes you this. In fact, I wrote an article about it. Did I send you an article about how to become the uh, go-to guy? Yes, you did. That was that was with journalism, print journalism. How to become a columnist. I also wrote one on radio, which I have to find for you. And anybody can get on radio if they have enough money. Talk about broadcast radio. And we're talking thousands of dollars? 
No, because uh, when I first show on the air about 18, 19, 20 years ago, it was $400 an hour. Okay. But I made $1,300 an hour. <laughs> uh, math is not my subject, but it worked out really well. I can do the math on that one. Yeah. And thanks to people like Rush Limbaugh, talk shows are a valid method of being on television and radio. And everywhere. Yeah. Now, you're doing a great job with your show. I've, I've watched you from the beginning. Thank you. And, but you, you need to move your head around a little more when you're talking on television. That's one of the things <laughs> I had to learn when I was an anchor. If you sit there and don't move, only your lips are moving. You're like a cartoon. But if you move your head around, you show some lively stuff, like your background flashing on and off. That looks like a real studio. That was very helpful. I, I really do appreciate that. Yep. Yep. Well, I got tired of looking at the cloudy background you used to have. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So folks are going to, so somebody that is uh, a professional in your community uh, will want to expand their market, m maybe just within Columbia or, or maybe all over the United States. I mean, you're not limited when you're on the internet. And they I want have a, a client who I set up to do health shows. I'll get that in. That's back a little bit. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, Brooke, Brooke Health. Yeah. yeah. She does a health show every week with guests from the uh, medical community. She does uh, home health care. She's had calls away as far as Washington State, Texas, people calling in for this stuff. And it helps her in her community. She's also been a registered nurse and has had her own business, which is growing rapidly for the last five years. And people are getting older. Look at me for crying out loud. I look like Santa Claus and drag. Uh, <laughs> but people are getting older and they need home health care. I took care of my wife for 12 years. I sold my practice uh, and did nothing but home health care for my wife for 12 years until she became uh, what she got diagnosed with Lewy body dementia and had to put her in a uh, long-term care facility. And about three weeks ago, she went into hospice care. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right. Uh, but now that my wife is well taken care of 24 hours a day, I can go back out and do what I want to do, like starting the studio and opening up. I have people interested in being on, having their own show. But it doesn't matter where you are. It's like you're in Alabama, right? That's right. And I'm in sunny, well, it's rainy today, South Carolina. It doesn't matter where you are. I plan on having a 24-7 broadcast of Internet television, plus the people on the uh, radio station. We have a camera at the studio, too. A terrible studio. <laughs> That's why I opened this thing. But it's going to be state-of-the-art, chroma key. And I even have a little wedding chapel who wants to do uh, the weddings there so they can have backgrounds like Greece, the Vatican. I never Paris, would have thought France. about that. Amazing. Well, that was my idea. The guy's, <laughs> the guy's two doors down from the uh, uh, storefront, so it makes difference. Uh, there's a lot of Hispanics in Colombia who want to get married with Mexico in the background. Hey. We can accommodate anybody. It's going to take a while to get it done. I'm doing it myself. I've been out trying to hire someone with the kind of knowledge I need, but they don't understand, the people I interviewed, don't understand what we're doing right now. Right, right. You know, it's funny. There's a whole strata of folks that, that are getting it, and, and they are getting it, and they are into it whole hog, and they are figuring this out, and they're making it work, and then it's like there's just a... A, a cloud around it and the rest of the world is, is totally oblivious. They might know that, that CBS and NBC do a, a webcast version of something every now and then or, or Fox might, but uh, you know, most of the world has not yet discovered internet video, the, especially live video. The, the future of this video, internet television, is huge. Very big. Yes. 
and it's getting bigger all the time. People like you're making inroads, uh, Amnon, uh, Mike, the guys on Sunday. I watched, I spent five hours of my morning watching that show and listening and participating occasionally. I learned something all the time. Right. I'm a professional student. Well, and there are folks like, uh, like Andrew Zarian, who has got uh, the whole Guys from Queens network up in New York that really has made a market and has a large following. Um, and folks are tuning in to see what's going on with either, you know, What the Tech or, or the Andrew Zarian show or whatever shows he's got going on because they enjoy that, that genre. What you're talking about is, is a little different. Um, it's still a money-making opportunity. I mean, it's still professional from your standpoint, but it's basically an offering to the community to come let us make you a recognized expert in your field by putting you on Internet TV. Now, have you explored with any of the local TV stations or the, or the cable companies about getting some of, uh, some of your content on their networks too? Well, the mayor of a town called Chapin has a TV channel with Time Warner, and the Chamber of Commerce has hired me to create a half hour a week show with the people from the Chamber membership being interviewed for five minutes at a whack, and that will run on that cable. Now, Time Warner here has been moving in and around, and so in fact, they were advertisers on my program for a number of years. Uh, oh, one of the <laughs> One of the things about internet radio and just radio in general, you may learn how to put it up, but I teach people how to make money with it. If it doesn't make money, it's too expensive a hobby. It's an ego trip. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, I don't need an ego trip. I just need money. So <laughs> well, I'll be teaching. I'm doing workshops for the library system in Lexington and Richland County on how to podcast. I've done several of those, and they paid me. I love people who pay me. It's, it beats working for a living. <laughs> That's right. Well, do you ha have you got a website or anything that uh, that folks can look at yet, or, or is that uh, no, still in the works? No, I've got a website. That's one of the things. I'm just one old guy here, one old fat balding white guy. Uh, dot com. Just I got it. Okay. Dot, yeah, no, it's uh, the. The new company is called TELUS Broadcasting Company, LLC. And TELUS is uh, tell us what's going on. Also, if you're literate, it's uh, Roman goddess. Tell us. Tell us. Locked up again? Or are you just writing? I'm just writing. Oh, you, I want to make a note. You stop moving. It. Yeah. And I'll have a website. I've got a domain name and all the other stuff, but uh, getting it up. Uh, in fact, uh, what was that young man's name? Uh, who does? He's like just turned sixteen. Oh, Nick! Nick's watching Nick. today. Yeah, yep. he has a. Uh, he does website design. I wrote that down. Took his uh, web address. I'm going to contact him. See what he can do for me. Okay. Well, Nick, there you go. Doctor Charles we, is going to be calling. One of the good things is I have access to. Uh, what do you call them? Interns from the college. Cheap labor. Yes, indeed. I always pay them. One thing about being in broadcast, I never have to worry about getting my car fixed or having a free meal. <laughs> so I can always take care of people that way. Folks, if you're, if you're just tuning in at the end of the show, this is Dr. Charles Campbell. I'm talking to him from Columbia, South Carolina. He is uh, in the process of uh, building a internet TV studio there in, in the Columbia area to serve the professional community. Charles, I really appreciate you taking the time to call in with me today. And I enjoy uh, talking to you anytime. I, I, you know, likewise. See, there was something I was thinking of, and I just went out of my head listening to your chat there. But VidBlaster <laughs> is my choice of uh, equipment. And well, good. It really works. I've always found it easy. And working out the chroma key and the uh, way of doing multi-screens, multi-cameras with one camera, right? very good. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's got all the building blocks. It's just limited by your imagination. Anybody out there would like to hook up with what I'm doing, I'd be glad to share what I know. 
Uh, if you'd care to email me, it's Dr. Campbell, D-R-C-A-M-P-B-E-L-L, like soup. Dr. Campbell at strnetwork.com. Stands for Select Talk Radio. strnetwork.com. I talk to everybody. All right, let's see. I'm going to put that up on the screen. It's ST Network. STR. STR Net. Stands for Select Talk Radio. strnetwork.com. And that's Dr. Campbell. Yep. Okay, there we go. Dr. Campbell. Is that right? That's good. Okay. Yep. That's how you reach him. Because uh, if and if you if you send him a note, he will send you back a note, and attached to that will be a really interesting article of something that he's written, and probably rewritten and probably rewritten again to to be pertinent yeah, to today. Did you ever read that a draft of the book I'm writing? I read the first four chapters. To anything? Yes. The first what? I read the. I got up to the chapter about technology. Um, and I, I said, I think this one might need a little bit of oh, freshening I, up. W- when my wife got ill, I stopped writing. And well, that's you, been 12 years ago. So computers have changed. I used to write a syndicated column called PC Review. I sold that to an English publishing company. But uh, you can sell anything to anybody if you have the right attitude. Indeed. Indeed. And anybody wants to figure out how to sell advertising, I can show you that too. I used to go around the country teaching radio and newspaper salespeople how to sell advertising. Charles, we don't have time for all that today. No, anytime. We are, we are at we are out of time because you and I could talk for hours. I know. We done so, but anyway, that's, that's another right. story. That's right. Good. Well, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'll catch you soon. See ya. Bye-bye. That was Dr. Charles Campbell, my good friend from Columbia, South Carolina, who has got uh, some really exciting things coming up, and we're going to keep in touch with him. And uh, you keep in touch with us. Don't forget about our contest ending in two days. If you haven't entered now, get that video clip into us. Uh, You'll be the winner of a brand-new, spanking-new Fid Blaster Home Edition version 2.27. I'm Tom Sinclair, that Bid Blaster guy. Till next time, see you later. And now I gotta figure out how to get out of this show. Hold on a second here, folks. I'm a Bid Blaster professional. I know how to do this. One second. Should have had this all queued up and ready to go.